What do you know is true without evidence? What are you certain of, right down to your bones, without proof? There's a travel agency that's been around in my town for as long as I can remember. I wholeheartedly believe it's a front for the mob. You better keep quiet or you'll be taking an unexpected trip. We'll send you on a nice, long vacation. Reddit supermods have the ability to give unlimited free awards on Reddit. This allows them to make certain opinions more visible and normalizes paying real money for Reddit images. They are giving out free coins to spend on awards. OMG really? I noticed I had like 700 insurers held in by them. My brother deleted my game save on purpose. He was old enough to read, he knew what he was doing. I did. Oh crap something's about to go down. Let me get my popcorn. Most of this is just busy work. To help the next generation out. Being born in a world with running water, power lines, fast food, and fast travel. It's hard to not appreciate humans for doing everything. The average middle class person of today has luxuries and a standard of living that far surpasses that of kings and queens from centuries ago. My sister ate the whole ice cream box without asking my parents. Like the box too? Maybe it was just the box. That a lot more famous actors than we realize are secretly the children of other famous actors from the previous generation. I call it the Hollywood bastard theory. A startling number of famous actors and musicians had rich or famous parents already connected in the industry. It seems the outsider making it big is more and more rare. Ditto for music. It's made me believe that the relative lack of a social safety net in the US keeps a huge number of people from rising upward just because they don't have parents that can finance their dreams or at least keep them from ending up borderline homeless if it doesn't work out. 100 years from now only a handful of kids and grandkids will have any memory of my life. 200 years from now, at most I'll be a photo in an old family scrapbook with my name in the margin space. 300 years from now no one in my family will know I existed outside of a half-finished family tree. Yet ultimately all of their hopes and pains, successes, and failures, dreams, and oppressions will be the direct result of my having existed. So it isn't that bad. Damn dog this hit different. Got me contemplating my entire existence at 9.04am on a Tuesday. That gardening is the secret to happiness. Sounds super strange, especially coming from someone like myself an ex-world of Warcraft gamer. I had kids, got busy with work, wanted out of the suburbs, got some land in the country, and started planting stuff. Years later I have what I call a food forest. I have replaced lawns with fruit trees, bushes, vines, flowers, all woven together to mimic a natural forest, except everything in it is edible. It has changed my life completely. I just think there's something about being outside in the sun, feet on soil, hands in dirt, planting crap, watching it grow in the background of your life, going out and checking on it and watching how much bigger it is getting. Watching life find it, and now you get to live with the natural world, not isolated from it. Birds making nests in your trees, frogs making home in your ponds, seeing bees all around your flowers, butterflies everywhere, rabbits and squirrels moving in, then owls moving in to eat those. It's this wonderful trophic cascade that you started, and it's incredibly rewarding. Plus, being able to just walk outside and get chemical free nutrient rich dinner is amazing. You can see my food forest in my post history if anyone is interested in seeing what I'm doing. I actually think a big reason depression is such a big thing these days is because we have all become so disconnected from the life that we evolved in for the last 6 million years. We evolved walking around savannas and forests, pulling food off bushes and trees, out in the sun, feet in the soil, hands in the dirt. We couldn't be further from that, living inside our isolated homes cars and offices. It's no wonder we're all so depressed. I think gardening is the secret to happiness. Saving this comment for further study. That my last boss secretly hated me even though we had, on the surface, a very positive relationship. My boss acted like we were friendly and encouraged me to be open with her. And then I got fired out of nowhere. So, that was obviously an act. I got fired for being honest on my annual review. She said I was obviously unhappy with my job and that I was too hard on myself. Like, 
I just said that I needed improvement in specific areas. I was comparing myself to people who had been in my position for over 20 years. Yep, I'm gonna give myself a three-fifths. George R. R. Martin will never finish the last Game of Thrones book. Conspiracy theory, he's doing it intentionally, so he will never have to risk writing a bad ending, and after his death, his books will remain legendary status forever, just like every other unfinished great projects. Oh. I doubt they will receive legendary status, if unfinished as the whole thing has been sullied by the TV show, and the prolonged wait, that many fans don't even care anymore about the next book. I think the series will be used more as a warning tale for future writers, to avoid the same mistakes as Martin, especially don't make a story so complex you struggle to follow it yourself. Life on other planets. Not green one eyes aliens, but even insects and things like that. Same. The universe is way too big for us to be the only ones out there. Here's a good point Neil deGrasse Tyson makes, we are not even made of odd stuff. Excepting helium which is inert we are pretty much made of the most common element in the universe. Carbon is the most chemically fertile element, so it's no surprise we are carbon based. Plenty of carbon throughout the universe. It can't be just us, the numbers are just too staggering, and the material to make life as we know it is. Everywhere. Burger King hash browns are just tater tots. Aren't McDonald's hash browns essentially big tater tots? Aren't all hash browns just tater tots? Edit, my highest upvoted comment is about potatoes. I think this says something about my life. That the near complete absence of financial literacy education in American public schools is 100% on purpose. In the 80s we had financial literacy classes in public schools. Not just in my state, but in others as well, based on conversations with other people of a similar age. It is non-existent now. My school system had a semester-long course, where we were given an imaginary household, to manage from creating a budget, paying bills, dealing with surprise expenses like repairs, investing in the stock market, and filling out a 1040 tax form. We even had to use the newspaper, to research local voting issues. Our grade was based on our ability to keep the household afloat and answer basic questions about local government. This was a required course to receive a diploma. My parents taught me nothing of this at home. It was mainly learned at school and trial and error as an adult. I feel that few parents of my generation teach their kids these skills now. I'm a restaurant manager and I take extra time helping younger employees figure out basic finances to help them get their lives on the right track. I'm always amazed at how their parents never help them set to up a bank account, debt management, get their own auto insurance, etc. If we want the world to be better, we need to tackle things that are intimidating to us and help the younger generation learn. I'm somewhat embarrassed to say I have personally never done this. I just go to an accountant for my taxes. I could be getting scammed. I have no idea what they do. I'm a 30 year old millennial. If I'm stuck in traffic and switch lanes, because the other lane looks like it will move faster, the lane I just switched from will automatically go faster. However, if you don't switch lanes your lane will still go slow. So go ahead and switch lanes. Even though it doesn't change your commute time it speeds it up for the rest of us. And to avoid cognitive bias, notice the moments when your lane is moving faster than the other. It will balance you out. Also, stick to the unwritten rule of not switching lanes, unless you're sure that it will be beneficial to you. You look like an absolute douche when you cut someone off in traffic, and you get embarrassed when the person behind you passes you. Sometimes it's better for your mental health to not switch. That there is other intelligent life in the universe. We may never encounter it, certainly not within any of our lifetimes, but it's out there somewhere. The universe is too goddamn big for us to be the only ones. We have hardly explored the ocean in its entirety on our own damn planet, so it's amazing to think what else could be out there in the universe. What we know is a drop, what we don't know is an ocean. Flat earthers are just doing it for attention. They really don't think the earth is flat. That's how it started off, sure. I think it was circular. There was a very small group of people who absolutely believed the earth was flat. Then a bunch of people hopped on for attention. But now I fear some of those people got lost and truly believe themselves now in their delusion. 
Life exists outside of Earth. I can't imagine a universe where we are the only life. It would defy all odds that we are the only living thing in an endless space of planets. Each star in the sky has the potential for life and there are so many more we can't see. Deja vu comes from previous dreams. Holy crap I thought I was the only one. I'll go through something and then think. I had a dream about this several weeks ago. I can read very useless parts of the future. It's a phenomenon called Deja Reeve, and I get it occasionally. I remember it started when I was a kid. Two years later I go on a school trip to an art gallery and bam there's that still image that I remember from that one dream. I get them every now and then and they happen months or years. In advance it's very strange. My most recent one is I was in an airport and a plane crashed into the top of the building and I felt extreme heat and I woke up. Definitely crapping myself for my next few flights now. That the entire US mattress industry is a front for criminal organizations. Virtually every city has more mattress stores than it needs. When was the last time you bought a mattress? So then why does a city of 80,000 have like 7 separate mattress retail places within like 6 blocks? I completely agree that there is definitely something more to the mattress store industry. The 3 times in my life since college that i have bought a mattress these stores are always standing empty of customers until i roll in it almost feels truman show esque where i stop through to browse and all of a sudden three forecast members come in as customers to maybe promote the positive vibes of buying a mattress i could go on for far too long about this industry it is so weird whoa same i'm always the first one in and more follow me in eerie there is some Godzilla crap at the bottom of our oceans. Deep sea gigantism will not fail me. If it's any consolation, if giants do exist down there, they will probably stay down there. Ocean creatures tend to stay in their zone of water pressure because that's what their bodies have adapted to. Some have more range than others. Ever seen a blobfish? Ever seen what a blobfish is supposed to look like at the depth it's supposed to live at? It gets all messed up when it gets brought to the surface because of the water pressure differential. See also, giant squids. One of the only reasons we know they exist is because they die and float up here or are very close to death and can't maintain proper buoyancy. They don't want to be up here, they prefer the crushing blackness. God, I'd be terrified to be that deep and imagine you hit what you think is the bottom and you're insanely deep, like, you were exploring the Mariana Trench, and then you find a cave, think it's just going to be small, you start exploring, you get lost, you find some creepy crap, so many things that could kill, drowning and beasts, scary. My phone is listening to me, it's simply not a coincidence anymore how my targeted ads change directly related to and after a conversation. People say we are just more predictable than we think. But I mentioned something I haven't even thought about for years and there it is on Instagram. A buddy of mine had a weird experience with this one. We were hanging out, playing a crafting game on Steam. I begin mining, and he accidentally falls into the hole I'm in, because it was kinda hidden in the foliage. This happens a few times, so he makes up a pretend organization with initials he made up, think. FCC or CIA, saying their regulations require holes to be marked. It's a fun joke. Anytime he wants me to do something he asks from the point of view of it's part of the guidelines. It's the law. There will be fines. If you don't comply. Never once was it typed, searched, anything. Just verbally spoken. And then we both start getting ads for a company with those initials, apparently belonging to a real company that we were 100% unaware of. Weird crap dude. Definitely. Friend and I were talking about bulletproof vests in casual conversation. Can't remember why. Weren't interested in buying them or anything. And never googled or typed it in anywhere in my phone. Q Facebook ads for bulletproof vests. You can't tell me FB randomly chose that when I never even typed it out let alone googled. Back when I was 10 there was a competition for school kids to write a treatment for an episode of Doctor Who, with the best one being developed into an full episode in the next series and the winner receiving a writing credit. I was a huge fan of DW at the time and the competition was actually run through schools, so my teacher made the entire class do it, but I was very excited. I began writing a story about the doctor landing on a planet full of defective Cybermen. 
whose programming had gone awry and had been left on this asylum planet to rot. The doctor lands there in response to a mysterious distress call from a woman and attempts to find and save her while avoiding the dangerous dysfunctional Cyberman and the looming threat of planetary destruction at the hands of the normal Cyberman. I finished my short treatment and gave it to my teacher to submit. Unfortunately it turned out the competition was very strict about the formatting of submissions and mine was returned because I had used the wrong formatting in some way, it seemed like a weird reason. I was a bit disappointed and that was the end of that. But then, a year or two later, there was an episode of DW called Asylum of the Daleks, which seemed incredibly similar to my story except with Daleks. So incredibly, eerily, similar in fact, that to this day I'm absolutely convinced that Stephen Moffat saw my script and came up with a formatting excuse so that he could remove me from the competition, steal my story, change the bad guys and claim it as his own. I have zero evidence, I don't even still have the treatment I wrote or any letter from the BBC about my submission, and yet I know in my bones that Stephen Moffat stole his script from 10 years old me. I believe you. Same but seems more likely it was read, forgotten, and mistakenly remembered as original content. I watched Flight 93 go down. I would never share that in real life, because it's grim and no one would believe you. The geography of the reports are off. I saw it clear as day from Kent State's main campus, Ohio. I didn't know what I was seeing other than I remember thinking, that plane is way way too low. We had a radiation college, so planes were common and too big, and it's jerking around like how a toddler drives a Power Wheels truck. Continued on to class. You don't wanna be late even at a liberal college. What you almost certainly saw was it being taken over by the hijackers. During the hijacking, which was at 9.28am, maybe a 9.30 class, during the takeover it was very jerky and lost a lot of altitude, and it took a while for the hijackers to stabilize it and get it under control and turn it around. 